Hello, I am Benedikt Bugel from the Electroacoustics Laboratory at the UTH Regensburg and today I'm going to talk to you about our implementation of a bionic acoustic camera. At first a little schedule, I'm going to give you a short introduction and then we're going to talk about spatial hearing, about the implementation of the acoustic camera and then I'm going to give you a short conclusion and an outlook. So what is a bionic acoustic camera? Most of you probably know uh, what an acoustic camera is. It's a device that works similar to a thermal camera, but it overlays the video image uh, with acoustic information. And it does so by localizing the sound using microphone clusters or microphone arrays. Uh, and what we decided to do differently is that we used um, an artificial head as a source for audio. So an artificial head is basically a mannequin with uh, artificial ears with uh, microphones inside them and it records sound exactly in the same way as our ears. So it also has the same spatial cues and information as we have for spatial hearing. Talking about spatial hearing, at first a little bit of orientation. There is the azimut angle, which tells me whether something is to the left or to the right in the horizontal plane. And there is the elevation angle, which basically tells me if something is up or down in the media median plane, which is the plane in front of our nose. The predominant cues um, for the azimut angle are firstly the interaural arrival time differences. Uh, this just happens um, if we turn our head towards or maybe perpendicular to a sound source. Um, the sound has to travel further to one ear than the other and this depends on the angle of arrival and if sound has to travel further it takes longer so we have arrival time differences and they are directly linked to the direction where the source is. The second cue we have is um, the interaural level differences. This is mostly due to the shadowing of the averred ear, so the ear that is pointing away from the sound source and depending on the angle this is more or less shadowed for higher frequencies but also for medium frequencies. For the elevation angle uh, the cues are not binaural because we don't have any ears for example on top of our head or on the back of our head or on our chin. So we have to rely on monaural spectral cues and these emerge from the pinna acting, so the outer ear, acting as a directional acoustic filter. So depending on the direction where sound comes from, uh, the structure of the pinna reflects the sound with a different delay towards the ear canal. So there is interference resulting in frequency patterns and these patterns for different uh, directions. And this way we can localize sound uh, up and down as well. Uh, something important to note here um, that there is a huge difference between, for example, vision and the way we visually localize things and the way we localize things acoustically. Because in the acoustic signals, unlike the signals where light hits the retina and is hitting the, the sensory neuron, there is no topographical representation uh, of the localization. So all the localization information has to be extracted from the audio signals via either neural processing or, in our case, uh, via signal processing. The hardware we used to implement uh, the bionic acoustic camera was firstly the artificial head. Um, then we used a DI box to get the signals into a USB audio interface. Um, and a webcam for the video signal and everything was connected to a PC running MATLAB. For the um, artificial head we had to perform head related transfer functions measurement as a basis for our localization algorithms and we not only measured a reference data set with five degrees revolutions we also measured uh, two testing data sets in anechoic as well as in echoic conditions with a 15 degree resolution. So with these uh, head related transfer function data sets, we tested four algorithms, um, the cross channel algorithm, a projection algorithm, a template matching algorithm, and my own suggestion, a cross ratio algorithm. And as we needed something to compare it to, to we did a little study with uh, 10 subjects 
to determine how well we could localize sound in the elevation direction with a similar task as our system was given. And then we plotted the results together, at first for anechoic conditions. And here we can see that the cross-channel algorithm actually works pretty much exactly as well as uh, spatial hearing, closely followed by the cross-ratio algorithm. And then uh, far from it, there are the other two algorithms uh, that were clearly outperformed here. Um, the test looked very different in echoey conditions. Here, the listeners were still able to detect uh, sound sources more or less unbothered um, by the reverberation and reflections in the room, but uh, the algorithms were highly distracted. So this goes to show that uh, spatial hearing is far more robust to reverberation than the uh, than the tested algorithms. For the demonstrator, the cross-channel algorithm was actually used, but it was only used to estimate the elevation angle after the azimuth angle has been detected by cross-correlation. And this was done to improve performance, to make uh, the system able to perform in real time. Using uh, cross-correlation was uh, not a coincidence in this case, uh, there's a pun intended, um, in uh, the neural structure in the nuclei olivaris that processes sound, binaural sound, there is um, a structure called coincidence detection and this is basically a neural implementation of uh, the cross-correlation. So very funny to find uh, the perfect uh, algorithm uh, implemented in neurons here. Uh, last but not least, you can see a little video uh, of the system at work. And here you can see me talking in front of the system and then I do a snip, which you can see, clearly see where it is. So as you could see, um, the system turned out to be a functioning demonstrator for spatial hearing. There is still a lot of room for improvement, especially as far as reverberation and reflection robustness goes. Um, the algorithms that we tested actually performed worse than expected when reading the papers they were presented in. And this is due to using separate head related transfer function data sets. This is uh, absolutely good practice in machine learning, but in signal processing, it is not seen as a necessity, but here it seems to be. And something that also became very evident was the lack of data on elevation angle spatial hearing. And this is actually a topic I will investigate uh, into myself uh, because I find it very interesting. So I hope you also found my, my talk today very interesting and I'm open to your questions now. Thank you for your attention.